welcome to the Fish Nerds, the show about fish, fishing, and eating fish. I'm Clay Groves, uh, your host, licensed fishing guide, and your new best friend. And tonight's going to be a really cool show, because for those long-time listeners, people who have been with the Fish Nerds for five years, and almost 200 episodes, will recall that the Fish Nerds was founded by not just me, but my friend Dave Kellum, who is back, and this time it's personal. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Hi, Clay. How are you? I'm doing great. Before we get into you, mm. also, not just having Dave, he's got something secret he's going to tell us tonight. Mm-hmm. We're going to play Stump the Fish Nerds. We're going to do news. Hey, but first, Dave Kellum, what's going on? Oh, lots of stuff. You know, tonight was, I went out to Hampton Harbor, mm-hmm. and there is there's a state ramp there that's nice and costs I think like 10 bucks or something to launch mm-hmm. and then you there's your boat in the water yeah and then there's yeah. a crappy one up on the marsh that is just this beach that goes in to the to the tidal river so I always go to the cheap crappy one is that the one I went with you to probably it's it's yeah. usually the ones that you it's just this kind of wide open beach oh yeah we were there that's right. Yeah. Uh, it's where we caught all those those bluefish. That's right. Yeah. I love bluefish. Little snappers. And uh, I went out there today because I was chasing flounder. Supposedly, flounder are being caught, but I think it's a big lie. It's always a fly. <laughs> big lie. <laughs> and uh, I got my truck stuck in the, in the marsh mud. Oh, congratulations. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, getting stuck is awful. <laughs> you know, getting stuck in snow is is one thing, but mud mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is just the most god awful thing ever. Uh, <laughs> and the worst part is, and, and I wasn't in total panic mode because the tide was going out. If the tide was coming in, I would have just lost it. Call the insurance company. Yeah, I mean, it would have been bad. So here's here's a little. By the way, by the way, I'm impressed you have a truck. Well, it's a pseudo truck. It's an SUV, uh, you know. Uh, never mind. I, n- I'm less impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I wish I had a real truck. It was an all-wheel drive. But um, so, you know, you're getting in the mud and you realize, you know, you're getting deeper and deeper. And it, I've got these really big, deep trenches dug in the mud at this point. And I'm chucking rocks in and stuff. Um, here's what do you think was the secret to getting out of the mud? To getting out of them. Oh, so geez, imagine so- you're on the marsh. Mm-hmm. You're you're sinking in the mud. This this mud is getting, you know, the the trench is getting deeper yeah. and deeper. And you, as you as you rev the wheels, you're just spinning out, making a hole. Spinning. You throw rocks in. That's not working. Uh, grass. You, Big pieces of grass. You're right. It was you know the uh, floatsum that comes up. Um, yeah. And that rack line that was is full of salt marsh hay. Mm-hmm. I just salt marsh hay stuffed it with that, and it totally worked. Just a little traction. Once you get, and did you like? Once you got going, you're like just gun it and get out of there. Uh, you know, you you can't get too excited, right? Because then you'll just <laughs> drill into the beach some more. But I had to take my That's boat right. off the trailer because it was it was dragging me it's down. Too heavy. Ah. Yeah. So then I went back to put it in to put it back on the trailer, and I had to wench it in because the tide had went out and I couldn't get it in deep enough. And uh, I broke my wrench rope, my winch rope. Oh, no. And then then what? Uh, I ended up jerry-rigging another rope. <laughs> so, now, yeah, so now it's just a big pile of stuff. But before... Yeah. Boats the- are terrible, by the way. They're just <laughs> awful machines. <laughs> Boats are. I, you know, I, if you had special glasses where you could see luck, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, certain people would walk by and they'd just be glowing, right? You know those people. Yep. That, <laughs> they have more money than they know what to do with. They have gorgeous partners. Their kids are all scholars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just glowing with luck. Yep. <laughs> and then there's these dark holes. Yes. And boats are the dark holes of luck. Oh, man. I mean, I... I I, look, I I bought a brand new pontoon boat. <laughs> yes. So, quick three things have happened since buying it. One, the third day I own it, I broke the bimini top off of it. Right, thousand dollars, thousand dollars, three days old, damage, thousand dollars, thousand dollars. How did you do that? 
I was I was backing down a boat ramp with a sharp turn, and it's a it's a twenty four foot boat, and the trailer must make it thirty feet. It's a huge thing, mm-hmm. right? That, backing that up is big. Is, is turning the corner, and your eyes when you're backing things up, your eyes are on the pontoons and on the wheels. I'm on the cement, but I don't look in the sky. <laughs> and there's a tree branch overhanging. It's like about eight and a half feet high off the trailer, right? That's how tall the trailer is on the on the trailer. Wow, eight and a half. And it, Tree branch gets under the bimini top, which is, by the way, down. It's not like it's up in the air or anything. Mm. But a branch gets between that and the <laughs> rail of the boat. I hear a crunch. Once you hear the crunch, the damage is done. You can't stop <laughs> it from happening. Right. And just like that, within three seconds, thousand dollars in damage. Ugh, God. And you, know, you could buy you could buy an aftermarket top for a boat for three hundred bucks on Amazon. Mm-hmm. The boat was brand new. So I wanted the like I wanted to get back to zero. Plus, I was afraid to go home to my wife. Like, so I had to get the book because it's expensive. These are these are expensive things. <laughs> I had to get back to zero, right? Right, right. And then I I'm out with Rich Collins on Silver Lake, mm. and I, I hit a I hit a rock, and I chipped the prop, <sighs> you know, which is going to happen, right? That's not a big deal. That's, you know, you can get those repaired. I know, I but I bought a second one, so I'm going to swap them and oh. keep. A extra one on the boat and then uh, but by the way it, it, I, re- I checked a repair at my local shop is a hundred bucks a brand new one is a hundred and twenty dollars uh, a prop yeah, yeah hardly even seems worth repairing but yeah uh, I'm gonna mess around with it. that's true uh but it's not broken bad i just felt like getting it i want everything nice and brand new stuff yeah and it's got a <laughs> divot in it yeah okay yeah, and it, and he lose a little bit anyway. So then I I decide I'm going to moor it on Silver Lake because it seems to me driving it up and off the trailer is where you damage a boat, right? Mm. So I create mooring. I make I have three fifty gallon buckets, sorry five gallon buckets, full of cement. Each one weighs fifty pounds. <laughs> Big eyelet in nine feet of chain through them all linked up together, and I tied that I thought to a nice big long piece of rope. Mm. So I pull up to the spot I was going to uh, moor it and I pushed the buckets off the boat. I watched them go in the water and then I watched the chain move and then I watched the rope untie itself from the <laughs> chain and my buckets and chain sink down in the abyss of Silver Lake. <laughs> so- <laughs> oh, God. So my, my 10-year-old, 11-year-old daughter goes, I'll get it and she just dives in the lake. Oh, shit. <laughs> and this was like a week and a half ago. It was like 60 degrees in the water. And the air was 55. Yeah. And she was in there a good long time, but uh, never was able to rescue the, uh, the mooring. <laughs> oh, my God. How, well, how deep a water was it? Oh, it was, it was shallow. It's, uh, you can see it. Oh, you can you see know. him on the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. The, um, so I'll be able to recover it. God, I, I thought you were going to say she's like, oh, I'll save it and jumped out and grabbed onto it as it was going down. She nearly did. You know her. I mean, she's as impulsive as her dad. She <laughs> jumps in and everything. Yeah, I'll make a podcast with you. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, uh, see, if you had those luck glasses on, you could have seen that coming. I should have seen it coming because of Silver Lake. I mean, that's the we know this lake's terrible place, and it's, and now it holds three yeah. buckets of cement. Yeah, but they sank well, so at least that worked. <sighs> if the cement floated, I'd know I'm in trouble. I thought it was amazing that you can just moor it out there. Yeah, there's about six lakes in New Hampshire that have laws. Yep. Uh, and the rest don't. That's incredible. And I didn't believe it. So I called Marine Patrol and I said, hey, I'm going to put my boat in Silver Lake. What are the mooring regulations? And they said, there's none. Wow. You can just drop, you can drop a buoy and a mooring wherever you want as long as you're not b- blocking traffic. And, th- and they said that's on almost every lake in the state except for, you know, Winnipesaukee, Ossipee, and some of the bigger ones. Yeah, there, yeah there's yeah. like six. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, cool, let's do it. So, so why I wonder, isn't this state completely packed with houseboats? Because sleeping in a boat overnight in New Hampshire is illegal. No. <laughs> I also researched that. <laughs> Cause I thought I was going to be homeless after breaking the boat. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh God, I better have a backup oh, plan. <laughs> plan B. Oh yeah. my God. You're kidding me. It's illegal yeah. to sleep on a boat? In the freshwater systems. The ocean's different. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's <is> totally illegal. <laughs> That's why. God, how would you like to be sitting in jail? Mm-hmm. You know, next to the guy that, you know, for DWI and, and robbery. Right. All these tough guys. What are you in for? Sleeping on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I nodded off and damn it. That was it. 
Yeah. So yeah, it's overnight sleeping in a boat. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, it's nice talking to you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I learned so much. It doesn't take long. It doesn't so take long. What I, I want to know, because it's been a few weeks, you said, Clay, I need to come on the show and talk about something. Yes. I reluctantly let you back on. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> what do you got going on? All right. <clears throat> now, I'm excited. We have purposefully not talked about this, right? Yeah. I said, don't tell me anything. Right. Because we, we need the initial reaction. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so this idea came to me probably a month ago and I've been plotting it out and messing with stuff and talking to some people that have similar things. And I, I know why it might not work, but I, I don't want to tell you that I want to wait to see if you get to it. All right. Right. Okay. Okay. So you ready for the, wait, wait, wait. This, you're already planning that dark hole of failure. <laughs> I I am. You know, I, I work with a lot. <laughs> a side note. I work with a lot of people. Uh -huh. And lately, they've all pointed out that I never, when, when they come up with an idea, I always start off with the reason why it won't work. Mm -hmm. And to me. I, I, I love that about you. <laughs> I'm, I'm so the opposite. I'm like, that's a great idea. Let's do it. And you're like, yeah, we're going to die. <laughs> We're going to regret that. That's yeah. not going to work. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to turn myself around on that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, but anyway, all right. Enough said. I, I, clean your mental palate. All right. You all Flush set? with beer. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> you ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Airbnb for fishing spots. I love it. I know. <laughs> I love it. It's terrible and good all at once. So think of all. What are you going to call it? <laughs> so it already has a name. Oh, you already did this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can look it up online right now if you want mm -hmm. to. I, I do want okay. to. Okay. Type in spototter.com. <laughs> I love the name. It's better than happy crappy. Spot. <laughs> I still own happy crappy, by the way. Spototter.com. Spot otter. Oh, here it yeah. is. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm I need to register. So do you get it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so think about You're selling fishing spots. <laughs> yes. Renting fishing spots. Oh. Because how do you rent them? Because once someone knows them. Well, no. So think about this. All this private property around, right? So there are, oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> so think about all these lakes that people complain mm -hmm. about that has no public access. And now you can buy access. Yes. And you just buy access for the day. So oh, hey. if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see what are you looking for? Ooh. Oh. Maybe you just want canoe or kayak access. Maybe you just want to sit yeah. on a dock and fish for the day. Oh. Boy. Or maybe somebody has stream front property and you want to wade this stream that nobody else can wade. I love it. I know. Isn't it amazing? All right. You're like the new Uber. I know. Ah, <laughs> oh, I think it's I think besides fish nerds, it might be the best thing you ever thought of. <laughs> I I think it, it might actually it might actually make money. I know. I'm a little spooked. Now, now, when you get on Shark Tank with this, mm -hmm. as as now, Dave, six people have come on our show who have been on Shark Tank now. Wow, that's a lot. I know, but none of them call me after. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> once you get on Shark Tank, can 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 you still be my friend? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> um, my the site is a little broken because there's usually pictures. I don't know why my pictures right. didn't load. I love the idea. But and what's really cool? Think about this. So, if you got you got two parties. One is the fisherman, the fish the angler, and they register. And what's interesting is that they would have a profile mm -hmm. and you, you would not only be like their fishing stuff, but you could have some personal stuff. So then if you're renting your spot, you get a sense of who this person is. Right. Cause they're coming on your property. Right. Exactly. And you have the ability to rate them. 
Oh, so if they yeah. so if they leave cigarette butts and crap, you give them a low score. That's exactly right. Yep. What's your rating system? Uh, I don't know. I'm still working on all of that. Okay, I figured you'd have like you know different like rotten levels of fishes or something. <laughs> you, yeah, you have your 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 uh, minnows and dace on the low end and rainbow trout in the high end. You know. Yeah, it's more like yeah. bait in the sun versus you know. <laughs> I don't know what you worms worms in the backseat of the car. Right. Um, yeah. I'm still working on that, but right. so this profile could be really cool. And then the person renting the spot, you could do, you could have sort of specialty stuff. So for instance, let's somebody, let's say somebody says, you know what? I want to support veterans. I'm going to open my spot, my, my dock up to veterans that want to come out. That's a great idea. And uh, another thing is you could have, places you know the renters the people that own the spot uh com- pledge a like non-discriminatory or non being a jerk to women clause and they would be certified you know they they say yeah this this place this owner has said we're not going to hassle you know women or anybody else that comes on our property it's sad you gotta say that out loud i promise <laughs> i will not Ogle women on my property. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. But yeah. you know, the alternative is that if you're if you're somebody that is likely going to get in trouble with other people, you have to go to a public spot. That's true, and you don't know who the hell's there. That's true, and and if you have them sign in with like real usernames, like using their Facebook or something that requires them to be a real person, yes. Uh, that eliminates a lot of that problem. That's why you don't hear a lot about like Uber crimes and stuff because people have to be verified as human beings, and it's and and so we, everyone knows who they are. Well, see, yes, and that's I would think, and this is the reason I wanted to come on and and pitch this pitch this idea because after this show airs, the site the pictures will be fixed, and um, the survey is going to be set up because there's a couple of market research things we need to figure out. One is how much would you as an angler be willing to pay to fish for a day in some of these spots? Well, it depends how good the fishing is. Right. Now, fishing. Right. Is, it, is, it, is it really great access or is it like right where the bluefish or the, the uh, right where the, the uh, spawning bass are spawning or where the uh, stripers are running in Exeter, you know, that spot? Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah, that would be a good one. I would pay, I would pay $25 to fish that for two hours. Easy. Yeah. When it was like that Easy. time we were there. Yeah. Yeah. During the run where it's every cast is a fish. Yeah. Yeah. And that spot has just like the last, do you know, a couple of years ago, they made it no trespassing. You can't fish there. Dicks. I know. Yep. It's terrible. Um, but if they're spot otter, they can't. And, you know, so imagine spot otter gets huge. We could then give signs to popular spots. Oh, you want to fish here? Get permission on spototter.com. Yep. No trespassing except go to spototter.com. Love it. I know. For your permit code. <laughs> yes, for your permit code. Exactly right. Uh, I, I would love it. And does it have GPS functionality or do you have to put in zip code or is that come in? Are you still developing that stuff? stuff? Um, this does. Let's see. If you click on one of these, did you try yet? No, I'm talking to you and I don't want to be distracted. Oh, yeah. If you click on them. Um, yeah, I don't know. This I was working on this the other day and it stopped working. The locations have GPS, so you know where mm-hmm. those are. Um I don't I, I don't know. Now, so this idea actually came from I was driving and I was listening to public radio and one of their sponsors was Tenter. You ever heard of Tenter? No. So Tenter is T E N T R R dot com. And what they do is they go to private property and they set up a tent on this private property. So, you know, some of these rich people, you know, people that are glowing with luck, you know, those people. Yes. Um, <laughs> they, have, they have 200 acres of property and they're like, yeah, you know what? That tent in the back that I never see, great. You can set it up there. And they rent those spots for tent, for tent. So it's private camping. I love it. And when I heard that, I was like, well, let's do private fishing. Yeah. Oh, can you add and now even yeah, I love it. I don't think there's anything wrong with this at all, except for there's a lot of logistics and encoding I don't understand. Yeah, you know? and like I said, this the site should be 
it should be better. <laughs> and actually, yeah, I don't see a, I don't see a problem. Uh, I mean, unless it's, is is it proprietary? Have you now have you trademarked this or do you own it? I I've I've trade. You see a little trademark on Spot Otter. Well, then it's yours. It is mine. And uh, I've come on this extremely popular podcast. We have dozens of listeners to announce on May seventeenth that this is my idea. Yep. So your first out of the gate. That's the poor man's fish nerds is the poor man's copyright. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, your honor. Here is a nerd to verify <laughs> that I don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. I think it's fantastic. It potentially is great. So do you want to hear the, the problem? Yes. Okay. So I actually talked to a guy who rents VW buses. Okay. Um, and he's also into like tourism sites and all this stuff. And he says, you know, your problem is going to be insurance. Because mm. the liability of renting somebody, you know, renting space for somebody to come out. I, I'm not sure. I think that's a, that's a more recent because the now tenter. Yes. Are they buying insurance to have a tent on their property? They probably do. So I know Airbnb. Or is it covered by their homeowner's insurance? Well, so this guy said most homeowner's insurances are negated if you are treating your property as a business. Right, unless that's part of your insurance plan to begin with. Right. So it likely won't be. So if any of your listeners are in the insurance game, let me know. And apparently yeah. Airbnb um, is self-insured. So they have more money than God. So they just self-insure. Oh, because they went to, yeah, they have billions of dollars. Right. So they're just like, yeah. yeah, all right. If anything happens, we'll take care of it. Yeah. I can connect you with, with my insurance people who do weird insurance coverage. Um, <laughs> like, cover, like clay grows <laughs> you know, to cover, to cover, to cover me on my fishing boat. It, it's actually not that expensive. So, um, cause I, I bet the odds of something happening are actually that not that high. I wouldn't think so. Um, like compared to other things and everyone likes making money. So some insurance guy is going to write a plan that works for this. I would hope so. So that, that is or, one thing I got to figure out though. It's like, you know, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Or you have to like have release of liabilities, but even those aren't worth anything. Right. Yeah. Like my insurance company requires a release of liability. And then they say, even though <laughs> in court, they don't hold up. <laughs> <laughs> but what they do is they, they limit the amount of people who sue because people, a lot of people will, will sign a release and then not sue because they say I that release, not realizing that they can still sue. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I, I need some clever, I need some clever people on that front. I could use a clever coder. Mm -hmm. So if there's any coders out there and then I do want to start out. So I'm going to do, um, and it's not active right now, but an email list. So if you go there, you could sign up so you could be on the spot otter list. Um, so I can communicate with you. And then I do want to do some surveys. Like you said, it depends on how good the fishing spot is. Now think about this. Think about a private pond that nobody oh. has. I know that nobody has access oh. to. So I can dig a pond in my yard, grow the world record bluegill, and then you can pay me to come fish in my pond through spot otter. Yes. Or... Let's say you own a pond somewhere and you're a member of Spot Otter and you're, you know, you're loving it. Spot Otter says, you know what? We'll pay to stock your, your lake. Ooh, I know. now we're talking. Now we're talking. Uh, you know, there's another approach. Yes. That you might consider is monthly membership fees. So rather, mm. than, rather than having someone pay per site, right? Mm -hmm. Have like a, you know, $10 a month or $20 a month fee automatically coming out of their checking account. And then if people, if people start to get used and you pay out to people. Yeah. I don't know. I, Cause well, we can talk about, this. I have some other ideas I want to share on, 
on air, but <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Anyway, I just think about. I've seen other things where it's just you pay a fee, and then that fee gets you access to all these things, and then you can upgrade. And yeah, all right. So I need a business model person out there. Mm-hmm. If you're a model and I'm, into business, I am, I'm not. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I run a business that makes no money. So, <laughs> bad model. <laughs> but um, the other, I had another sort of thought. Oh, listen to this. This would be awesome. So let's say is part of Spot Otter because anything can happen right now, right? It's not. It's not necessarily anything. Let's say as part of this, you're like, hey, I went to Spot Otter and I fished. You know, this this there was a cabin on this lake that. Nobody can get access to, but you know, the guy let me in and I fish this and look, I caught this largemouth bass. Um, and actually it'd be better if this was a pond. So let me take that story back. Hey, I'm at this pond. <laughs> Cause it won't swim away that way. It's there. <laughs> right. And I'm a spot out and look at all these fish I'm catching and they post it. If there's, we could use that as data and then pay doc Martin, a fisheries biologist to give management recommendations. Ooh, I know. I like it. I like it. Do you think Doc knows enough? Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) probably. (laughs) She's a physicist. (laughs) She's everything, apparently. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. um, But anyway, I thought that was kind of neat. Like the actual catch data could be useful to the owner. I love it. Yeah, I thought that was kind of neat, too. So, well, and then they can sell that data to local fishing, your state fishing game people. Yeah. Sell it to those bastards. Oh, yeah. oh that's a good idea, too. Because you want that state money. I do, but I don't want to run afoul because I did think of another minor issue. We, The owner of the spot that is renting can't, can't help the person fish because then they're a guy. It depends on the state. Oh, okay. So in New Hampshire, that's true. If you're getting paid and you're helping someone fish, you're a guide. I, in some states, I think most states, there's no barrier to guiding. You just do it. Oh. So it's, that's why they make such a big deal about New Hampshire and Maine being the hardest to get your guide license. It's because most states don't have any barrier at all. Oh. So it's, it's easy to be hard when you're competing against zero. Yes, that, is, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah. That is true. Yeah, I think most of the South, I think even Massachusetts, you just pay a licensing fee. You don't actually have to. Yeah. And then some have nothing. Right. Well, and, you know, you said the price would depend on, well, that's interesting because you said the price would depend on, you know, how's the fishing. Um, that's impossible, though, isn't it? Like It is impossible. Because some people are great at catching fish and some people suck. I know. I think you can't, I think you can't price it based on how good the fishing is. You have to base on, on on how is the access I comfort yeah uh, av- availability uh, you know how much shoreline there is I think what they get access to not what can they catch because that's up to them right yeah. and I would think private lakes are much more than you know just access to a, a place that a lot of people have access to yeah, but you think of places like New Hampshire, right? We have uh, up in my way, the Conway Lake, right? That's my local big lake. Yep. If you want to fish that in the wintertime on the ice, there, unless you live on the lake, there's no public access. Oh, wow. Zero. It's managed by the state. Our tax dollars support it, but all the access is, on pri- is through private property. Now, if we were on Spot Otter, I can go, oh, I need every Tuesday access to your lake. Can I snowmobile across your backyard and get on the lake? And then, boom, we're in. That's it. That's it. Yep. Sp- I get it. Spot outer access. I love it. <laughs> I know. I think it's a really good idea. I, I kind of think it is too. <laughs> now here's, here's what I'm going to tell you, Dave. One piece of advice. Okay. If a big multi-billion dollar corporation offers to buy you out. Sell. Tell, take the money. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, by the way, the fish nerd is for sale for any multinational <laughs> corporation. <as well. laughs> and actually my plan would be to like get this running, get you know a big client list, and then go to Tenter and say, mm-hmm. "Hey, you should add a fishing component to what you're doing." Yes, and then you just sell them your thing. Yes, I love it. Yeah, I love it. And tell them they have to advertise in the fish nerds. Yeah. Okay. Deal. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> I got to get my cut somehow. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. 
Mm. But yeah, Spot Otter. I also own goodfishingspot.com. Oh, that might be a better name. Not as much fun to say. Yeah. I, what I'll do- actually, actually, though, it is not better because Uber's stupid, right? And, and it's huge. Right. It, so why Spot Otter is not as stupid as Uber? Yay, win. <laughs> win. You're not as dumb as Uber and they're billionaires. Right. So, yeah. And I have a cute little logo. It's a very, and it's fun to say. It looks good on t-shirts. I know. Spot Otter. Spot Otter. Dot com. You know what? Oh, <laughs> hey, I got pictures. It just came up, huh? Yeah. Did you get pictures? I'm not looking, Dave. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. talking to sorry. you. Oops. <laughs> there are pictures <laughs> now. <laughs> um, uh, um, I don't know. Huh. That's weird. There's pictures. Anyway. Spot otter. Uh, everyone. Well, hopefully everyone's going over there right now and taking a look and, <laughs> and doing the survey and... Yes. Well, we, yeah, we, I, I can tell you this. Uh, so here's the cool news, right? Mm-hmm. Dave, you're going to be on this, this week's podcast yep. and you're going to be on next week's podcast, yes. right? Yes. So how cool would it be two weeks in a row? Because next week we're recording our 200th episode yeah. with Doc Martin who's flying in from Kansas, which is bananas. Yeah, it is bananas. That's awesome. I know. Young, smart people hanging out with me uh, <laughs> and you. Uh, and and uh, but how cool would it be if, if after people hear this podcast, go to spototter.com, take a look, and then call the Fish Nerds hotline, 607-378-FISH. Give us some feedback, uh, and we can use that on the show. Oh, that's great. Yeah, do live feedback. Or you can, if they don't want to e- get their voice on, uh, they can either catch us on Facebook or email uh, clay at fishnerds.com, and we can, we'll use that on the show. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great, and um, I, I'd be happy to come on and give updates and things too. That's yeah, I will. I will be following along because it's exciting, and that's a really good idea. I think um, I would never see the failing as much as you would on that stuff. So. <laughs> I, insurance, I wouldn't even have considered insurance. I would just like that insurance. Yeah, <laughs> it's just if somebody wants to, you know, take twenty bucks to let somebody on their property, fine. Yeah. Now it's interesting idea too, because like in a lot of states, like New Hampshire, you can access on property anyway without permission hmm. if it's not if it's not posted. Yeah. But you may not know you want to fish that spot until you're on Spot Otter looking at photos and and information and going, oh, that's even better. I don't need to even think about it. So. And you get to know a little bit more about the person you're you're trespassing on. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I can see easily see a scenario where the person shows up and just hangs out and chats with you and like is, is excited to have someone else fishing there. Well, <laughs> so. think about that. I mean, you know, I, one of the things I was trying to talk to some people that uh, that have access, mm-hmm. and most of them, the money's not a big deal to them because well, if you have access to a nice deep water fishing spot or a really good spot. Money is probably not your big issue. Yeah. They're like, yeah. you know, it, it's more important to like, I, it, here's where I think this thing could really take off. If the profiles of the people fishing, you know, it's a love connection, Clay. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that personal connection where people are like, yeah, you know, this veteran, this disabled person, let's say this, this kid, this, this father that wants to take a son fishing you know come out to my dock use spot otter and you know it'd be great i get 20 bucks but more importantly i get to meet some nice people and i know a lot of nice people right now 20 bucks is sounds great (laughs) i think i'd rather have the 20 bucks <laughs> tired of nice people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. But you know, and I know a lot of people that um have ponds and lakes and those kind of things. They get asked all the time. Um and it must be kind of spooky because people, mm-hmm. you know, these strangers are knocking at your door. Mm-hmm. And it would be so nice to like say, look, I only let spot otter people on and you know, okay. we issue a badge or whatever. Something, something to put in the have car. You ever, have you ever knocked on a door to ask to fish? I have. It's awful. Yes. It I've awful. done it too, and I hate it. Uh, and I did it where I didn't have to, like by law. I just I did it out of, just out of courtesy. Yeah. And I, I hate it. Yes. I don't ever want to do that again. And see, so. that's why this is good, because there, I, think, I think this interaction is hated on both sides. 
Mm -hmm. I think nobody likes to bug somebody at their house and nobody wants to talk to strangers at their door. I agree. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's great. And so check out spototter.com and let us know what, what you think. Um, Dave, you want to do a little bit of stump the fish nerds? Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. All right. So hang on just two seconds here while I pull up the call we got here. Hang on a second. Okay, now it's time for Stump the Fish Nerds. And this is a great segment. Dave, I think you created this years ago. Huh? Uh, the, phone, the Fish Nerds hotline is 607-378-FISH. And you call in and leave us a voicemail and we'll play it. We got a phone call from John King, the crappy hippie. <laughs> play it. Hello, Fish Nerd Nation. This is Crappy Hippie, your tree-hugging redneck from eastern Kansas. Hey, I've got a really urgent question on my mind. We have a pond, and we manage it, and we work really hard to keep the environment down there healthy. So I was really upset last night to go down and see, like, I counted, like, 28 dead bluegill in the shallows. And it was mysterious to me because it seemed they were all male bluegills. There weren't any other sunfish species present, no crappie, no bass, no red ear perch or green perch. Um, None of those had died, just all male bluegill. Now, I will say we've been in the 50s, but here for the past week to 10 days, uh, we've been in the 80s and 90s. So we've gone from a cool, wet spring to a really hot, dry spring. And my question is this. Could those bluegills, trying to keep their nests alive, up in the shallows, had gotten too warm and exerted themselves too hard doing all the jobs a male bluegill does to mind that nest? Could they have hit a threshold point, either of oxygen temperature or both, and that's what caused them all to kill out like that? Um Anyway, Doc Martin, Clay Grove, that is my question. Do I have it right? Have I figured it out, or am I missing something? What happened to my bluegill? All righty, thank you, Fish Nerds. This has been Crappie Hippie, Tight Lines and Valentines. Peace out. Okay, I'm not sure how clear that was for you, Dave. Did you understand what he said? I did. I did. Okay. All right. So he wants to know what happened. Why are bluegill dying in his pond and during the spawn? Mm-hmm. And is he right? Were they dying because of low oxygen and heat and sunshine? What do you think? <clears throat> wow, that is that's a tricky one. I, you know, when he was talking about that, I was that's where my mind went was like, oh, they have sex exhaustion, you know, like yeah, like the big the big orgy, yeah. you know, that's it, kill over dead. I've never had that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I dream of it. It's never happened to me. <laughs> but someday, someday I'm gonna die from sex and just from my big my sex orgies. It's gonna kill me. <laughs> but so far, nope, <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> so I would, but uh, so I thought that too, and then, but then as he was saying that, I was saying, what about that? Is like the worst evolutionary trait ever. <laughs> It's pretty terrible, but it is the males dying. It is the males. That's true. That is yeah. true. Um, I boy, I don't. I don't know why. I can't imagine that they would be stressed so much that they just a bunch of them would die. Well, I can. Really? That's you think? Yeah. You think that's that's the story? Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. And it wasn't from actually having sex, um, which is too bad because that's a good way to go. Uh-huh. Uh, but I found an article by a guy named Chick, Chip Minimer, and this was written in 2014, and the headline is, biologist colon, spawning stress causes fish die-off at Sayers. And this is uh, about a local pond in Sayers. I, th- I think it's Michigan or something like that. Oh. And so it says, warm water draws, this is about crappie specifically, my my computer just refreshed. Um, warm water draws summer swimmers to Foster Joseph Sayers Lake. Uh, but it hasn't been good for fish. Biologists with Pennsyl- oh, Pennsylvania, with Pennsylvania's Fish and Boat Commission said fish, namely black crappies, have been dying in large numbers along the lake shoreline in recent days. Now, I read the whole article, so I'm not going to read the whole thing to you now. Yep. But exactly what, what um, John, the crappie hippie, said happened to these crappies. They get in shallow water. The males do not retreat to deep water in the heat. They stay and guard their nest to the point of exhaustion where they die. They also found mixed in uh, bluegill and largemouth bass also dying in the exact same way. So I think that this is an example of crappies doing it, but crappies being a sunfish, bluegill sunfish, all these things are in common. I think that is exactly what happened. I think he nailed it. Wow. 
that yeah. that's impressive. I'm actually going to disagree because that's, you know, <laughs> that's what I do. I love it. I think uh, somebody snuck onto his property mm-hmm. and fished all those on the bed and they swallowed the hook and that's what killed them. Oh, a bunch of bobbers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all, uh, that's yeah. That's a good bet too. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in all seriousness, that was fascinating. I had, I never had heard of that where they would, because they're shallow in shallow water and they don't want to leave. That's really interesting. Wow. Yeah. That, that drive to guard, to guard that nest is so big that they just, they don't care. They'll die first. Death first. <laughs> Wow. Before, before they swim off those spawning beds. So that I think that I think that John called in with the question and the answer. And therefore, he wasted his time and hours. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. <laughs> I can't figure out why no one calls in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a couple of promos I got into here. Uh, <laughs> this episode is brought to you by you, our listeners at patreon.com. If you like our show and want to give us some money, we need your money. Go to patreon.com slash fish nerds. Give us, uh, we're looking for like a dollar an episode, $4 a month, and you'll be like a superhero. Give us $25 and you get your business mentioned like our friend Josh Lopes at lopestax.org. Uh, lopestax.org. If you're in Massachusetts, you can get your taxes done with him or your money handled or whatever. Give him your money because he gives us his money. Uh, also, it gives $5 an episode. You get a hat. Uh, and all kinds of other cool stuff, go to patreon.com slash fish nerds. The episode's also brought to you by the Fish Nerds Guide Service. That's right. We are here and ready to bring your family on a guided fishing trip on a state-of-the-art brand-new pontoon boat with a brand-new bimini top. Yep, I said pontoon boat. This is a comfortable but serious fishing machine. We can troll for lake trout and salmon, cast for bass, or cruise into a cove and put the herd on some perch and panfish. Head to fishnerds.com for rates or call me at 603-986-4335 for booking. And we're the only guide service in the Mount Washington Valley of New Hampshire that can bring your whole family fishing. And if you don't fish, we can go tubing or do something else fun. I don't care. I'll take your money. Uh, Also, this show is brought to you by Thirst Productions. It's a one-man digital media agency catering to small businesses by helping them improve their online presence from website to search engine optimization, SEO, social media to targeted advertising, website analytics, and website maintenance. Rich helps businesses speak to customers more efficiently. Thirst Productions also gives back to cold water fishy conservation projects by working with select nonprofits at deeply reduced rates to help them to better share their message. So if you're a small business who needs a digital facelift, or if you work with nonprofit and you have a new online presence, get in touch with Rich at thirstproductions.com. Whew. That's uh, Rich from, uh, he actually one of our correspondents. It's his business. Hmm. And soon, we're launching a brand new fishnerds.com website, and he's building it. So, oh, nice. And I, and I haven't seen it yet. I can't wait to see what it looks like. I hear it's beautiful, and I think we're, we're ready for an upgrade anyway. So Yeah, that's good. awesome. All right. You, Dave, you got any more time, or you got to run? No, I got time. You got time? You want to do some news? Oh, I'd love to do fish in the news. I know. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. News, news, fish in the news. Everybody loves their fish in the news. All right. So first, from the Atlantic, so you know it's good and liberally biased. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love the Atlantic. <laughs> uh, the headline is hippos poop so much that sometimes all the fish die. Uh, their dung consumes the oxygen around it, creating a lethal pulse of suffocating water. You know, my uncle could do the same thing. Well, who can't? <laughs> do you, you ever see a hippo poop? <laughs> I've seen a hippo poop. I <laughs> want to describe it for those who haven't. <laughs> I think we're talking about the same thing. So they poop, but they have a little <laughs> poop dispensary <laughs> tail, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, um, the Varmints podcast describes it as a poop to <laughs> <laughs> It's exactly so, right. Yeah. So as they're pooping, <laughs> their tail flips around like a helicopter blade and it, it distributes the poop uh, amongst the uh, water systems. It's pretty great. That's incredible. 
By the well, way, some great- I, yeah. I think that's what happened to crappy hippie. Yeah, the poop to cop. Sorry, John, you got your bluegills got pooped on. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure I need to read this article. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we get it. So here's it, 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 without me reading the article, I'm going to guess this is what happens. <laughs> they poop, fish die. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I think so. Now, I, I have you ever heard of examples like 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 North American animals that kill their own fish? That wait, like by by pooping? Yeah, like do moose. If a moose poops in the water, do fish die? Or does anybody hear it? <laughs> everyone, everyone hears everyone it. Hears it. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I haven't heard of that. I don't know. All I know is like, like hippos are like the cutest and grossest and most dangerous animals ever. Yeah, but there's, I don't think there's anything good about them. <laughs> but they just, <laughs> if you go near them, they're gonna kill you. They won't even eat you. They just kill you for fun. Yeah, you know, them in their water and your fish, they kill you with poop. <laughs> Plus, poop to copper, copter cute until you get hit. I mean, <laughs> lousy pet, just lousy. The worst, the worst but, pet. But the babies, oh my god, the babies are cute. They are. You know, I I would say two things about hippos that okay. are worth you know that we should keep them around. <laughs> All right. One is their name. It's a good name. Really good name. Hippo. Yeah. Or hippopotamus. Yeah. Actually, both are very good. Yeah. Um, secondly, every year they usually feed them pumpkins. You ever see that? No. <laughs> like, like they, they fly pumpkins to Africa and <laughs> I, feed the wild hippos. It's like this giant pumpkin feeding extravaganza. Usually happens at zoos. Oh, okay. Well, but they give them pumpkins. I've seen it. They they give them pumpkins, <laughs> and then the poop to copter shoots out <laughs> pumpkin seeds. That's right. Pre fertilized, <laughs> Pre fertilized pumpkin seeds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Funny. <laughs> but hippos they're related to horses. Is that true? I I've heard that, but I am not smart enough to remember that. <laughs> like I I can't tell if I heard it from you or <laughs> if that's a if that's a real. common problem. <laughs> <laughs> Dave said. <laughs> Uh, all right wow. so there you go so, is, uh, so we talked about poop uh this has been a you know back in the old days that's common thread we always talked about poop and then we always also talked about sex mm-hmm. on the show because we pre- we press nerds talk about sex so from the huff post why is fish sex so hot right now um, this is an investigational journalism effort from the arts and cultural section of the huff post Melissa Borders, the Pisces like the shape of water offers romantic the Pisces like the shape of water offers romantic possibility to straight women who feel ready to give up on men. So right there in the title. <laughs> men making you crazy? Have you thought about fish? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, now have you seen the shape of water? I haven't. No, me either. Oh. I was hoping you had. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that, that's the whole story. I mean, the, actually, it's a really long story here. And they're talking about, like, there's, there's, historically, there's a lot of examples of, of movies and books where women fall in love with sex or, or, or with sex. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. Where women fall in love with fish or fish-like creatures. Really? So, in, yeah. So, like, you have, you know, The Shape, Shape of Water, mm-hmm. the book Pisces. Uh, another book called, I'm sorry, um, Made for Love by Alyssa Nutting. Uh, Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. Uh, remember, Little Mermaid. Yeah, Merman there. Now, remember when we were a kid, what was the movie? Splash? Oh, that was a guy falling in love with a fish. Yeah, I mean, that was Daryl Hannah. Yeah, everyone's in love yeah, with and her. I don't think mermaids count because they, they're they human on top. Uh-huh. And it's it's just about boobs. Right. So, what mermans are about? About what? Nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Trident. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> uh, like, what's the attraction? Uh, to, to for mermans. Well, I'm just trying to think about. So, like, let's talk about f- how fish spawn. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Let's say let's pretend there's a woman who falls in love with a male f- merman fish. Mm-hmm. 
like there's no joy in her sexual relationship with him. He'll swim up next to her. He'll shake a lot, look like he's yawning, and dump a bunch of sperm. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> no one's ever impressed. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like that's it. Well, I'm, you're you're not you're not being around the right people. <laughs> no, I don't know these people. But there's something very romantic, apparently, about uh, uh, about fish. Well, and uh, the fish are very smooth, uh huh. You know, and uh, muscular, mm-hmm. and um, they're quiet. They are, and that's interesting because. That quietness, this goes back to the story here. There's a quote from the story. One seductive yet impossible fantasy might be the romantic attention of a man who lacks the exhausting baggage of male entitlement. Wow. So if you're a fish, your ego isn't there anymore. Nice. Fish don't have egos. And, right. And they don't, they don't have to wear Axe body spray. They don't. That's true. Because I wear it all the time. Right. I love it. <laughs> Now, the question is, is if you're competing with a woman uh, who's attracted to fish, if that's your, like, who you're going after, do you really want to be in a relationship with a woman who's attracted to fish? <laughs> I mean, they're cute. Fish are cute. Fish but, are cute. Yeah. But is that the person you want to be in a relationship with? I think so. Oh. Because. <laughs> really? <laughs> Do go on because that shows some. <laughs> <laughs> that shows some uh, a pretty low bar of it of of impress. Oh, I like that. You, I love your. I love this. Is the dark day still? <laughs> this this is somebody. Well, if she's impressed with a fish, then she doesn't mind the way I smell. <laughs> you know. I can get away with a lot. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you think I'm messy? <laughs> <laughs> Try dating a fish. <laughs> I love it. Next time my wife castles me to clean up this house, I'm gonna be like, well, you ever live with a fish? <laughs> <laughs> She'll be like, shut uh, up and just clean the house. Yeah, take the trash out, you big dope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Huff Post always bring us the hard hitting news. Stuff. Well, and you didn't even mention the sexiest fish love ever. Oh, uh, please. The incredible Mr. Limpet. Oh, yes. <laughs> and his fish call. Yes. Oh. <laughs> and there was... Well, it, <laughs> in his case, that's, that's Don Knox, right? Yeah. And in his case, he went from being this weird-looking dude to a reasonably handsome fish. Yeah, he looks like a, a hake. Okay, so in fairness, <laughs> if I look like Don Knox... I would be in the game of the fish world. I would be on that side. Now, I'm not a pretty man, <laughs> I, but I'm a little prettier. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, and th- there was a love story there, and I think he ended up going with the fish love. Well, yeah, I think he did. I think he did. Well, he, was, he lived a good, long terrestrial life with no love. Yeah. So why not go with fish love? Yeah, yeah. The whole thing's so weird to me anyway. <laughs> Incredible Mr. Lippet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. One more story. Oh, good. One more from the Boston Globe. Hmm. That's just very big news from May 7th, 2018. The Codfathers behind bars in New Bedford's economy is paying the price. Have you heard this story? No. So the Codfather was, was basically, he was running the cod fisheries in in this area of Massachusetts, New uh, New Bedford. Okay. And all he was like, he was like, fil- all the money was filtering through him. He was making tons of money. He was catching fish illegally. And if you were selling fish in that area, then you had to go through him to sell it, which means you were part and parcel to the crimes he was committing. Yeah. But it was the only way to get business done. So Noah came in, uh, not, not from the Ark, but Noah National <laughs> Ocean. I can't remember. They came in. And they ended the Codfather, sent him to jail, fined a bazillion dollars, and they shut down fishing for most of the fleet it, out of New Bedford. Now, all these hardworking fishermen who had no choice, really, but to go through the Codfather, which was not his real name, uh, to, to do business, now those guys are all suspended from fishing for a number of years. Mm. 
and it's crushing the local economy. Hmm. And and so now they're all trying to appeal and get back in it. And and uh, the the NOAA people are like, well, you you've been fishing illegally, and if we don't hold you accountable, what are we going to do? Mm. So that's what the whole story is really about. That and that's the gist of the whole story. Wow. Yeah. See, I, Dave, I've grown. I, I read the news stories now before. You do. Them. That's wow. It's impressive. <laughs> That's my summary. Uh, so, what do you think they had to do? Like, how do you save these fishermen? I mean, they really were just trying to fish, but they had they were stuck in this kind of like culture of law breaking. Hmm. Hmm. Well, first of all, <laughs> we live close enough to that area. I do. Uh-huh. I live closer than you do. So I'm not going to talk shit about any of those guys. <laughs> no, and plus they will all kick your ass. Yes, they, they are all so much stronger than you. And they have access to deep water and many things that can sink and tie you up. That's true. That's true. And you can end up being so, ground in debate into chum. Yep. <laughs> uh, but so I will not talk bad about them, but let's say yep. there were hippo salesman Mm -hmm. and it was very commonly known in the world that you can't sell your yeah you can't sell hippos right i think it's kind of on the hippo salesman to realize that if they're selling hippos and they know it's not legal they they knew what they were doing right and that's kind of where where the legal side of this whole story is coming from is like you knew you were breaking the law. You did it anyway. We sent the big boss to jail. You're lucky you're not in jail too. Suck it up for a couple of years. The problem is too, it's not just hurting the fishing industry. It's hurting fuel sales, uh, repair shops. Like it's actually collapsing. This whole sub economy is collapsing along with the fishing economy because those guys aren't fueling the boats. They're not going to mechanics. They're not fixing their cars. They're not going grocery shopping. They're not paying their rents. All these things are falling apart along with it. So could you just cut them a break and like clean slate them and say, okay, start over. Don't screw up this time. Like I said, I'm not going to say <laughs> you hate those guys. <laughs> um. I don't know. I don't know. Dave's afraid. I am afraid. I am afraid. I, I'm not afraid. <laughs> Say I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't seem like a reasonable argument, though, because really anything illegal has an economic impact, right? That's right. So it's like, you know, murdering is, is bad, but just think of all the corners that are employed. Mm. You, you put that embalmer out of work by not killing this week. <laughs> Yeah. And I think it's a good point. And and the you could I guess you could make the case for anything. And uh, you know maybe they got to suck it up for a couple of years and get through the time, and maybe they'll be okay in the back end of it. Yeah. yeah, and it's you know I mean I feel for them. They're the fishing industry has been I don't know that's a challenging challenging thing because I'm not I can't quite see a future where there's going to be a lot of that going on. No. Now have you ever hung out with any of these guys? Uh, no. No, me either. Because they're not—they're not really um, our kind of nerds. No, they're—they're—they're no, they're, they're <laughs> so, making. They got to make money, and uh, they, yeah, it's a tough crowd. Those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And um, yeah. but yeah, I—I I don't see. Like I said, uh, did you recently hear that? Now I'm going to go back to the old days where I just sort of do hearsay news. I love hearsay news. That's safer. Um, hearsay news of that they're realizing that the research is in and that all the fish populations are moving north. I mean, they've been saying that for a while, but no, I didn't. Yeah, I heard that today on NPR. They did this big story, and somebody looked at 600 and some species of fish, including mm-hmm. lobsters and crabs and all of this stuff, and they went, "Yep." Everything's moving. It's you know, the warmer temperatures are pushing them out uh, or, you know, pushing them out of their typical habitats. And so we're not, the populations aren't low. They're just moving around. <sighs> That's what this, this study was saying. Now, I, I yeah, don't know. About, I've heard that before. I've heard people theorize about that for a long time. That obviously it's just moving north. So you're getting your cod fisheries going more north and your trigger fish are coming up and whatever else. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I'm not sure I buy it. <laughs> I'm not sure about it. And what happened? You know, all the stuff at the north. Where are they going? Like the stuff that's yeah, where they go. 
and they're going to more north. Yeah, but what happens if you're like as north as you can go? Well, then I don't. Then you, um, I don't. <laughs> then you collect with your friends in bigger groups. I have no idea. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> then you keel over like male bluegill. But these go to eleven. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. Uh, All right. Just like um, the old days. That's great. Yeah. More of not knowing stuff. Well, that was fish in the news. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. All right. I'm going to wrap this up here. I have um, one more segment I'm going to record without you. Uh, but let's uh, let's wrap you up and then I'll do the mic. Well, Dave, thanks so much for, uh, for coming on the podcast. It was uh, it was great <laughs> <laughs> yeah great <laughs> great thanks for nothing I, I seriously dave though really great having you back it, it you know anytime you want to come back you're always welcome it's easy it's fun and now i do all the work yeah i know it's really i could get into this yeah it's great just uh well haven't yeah so i've learned <laughs> I had to learn. Uh, but anyway, welcome back anytime. And what's your website again? Your new website? Spototter.com. All right. And is there any social media associated with that yet? Or is it just all by itself right now? It's all by itself, but you know, it doesn't take long to do that. So nope, you might want to get it done. Might. All right. So spototter.com. <laughs> you can check out Dave's work. And we want some feedback because Dave's coming back on next week. So check it out. Let him know what you think. Call the Fish Nerds hotline, 607-378-FISH, or email us, or find us on Facebook, and say, hey, great idea. Or, Dave, great idea, but you're screwing up everything. Like Whatever you think, it's good information. We can totally use it. Yeah, and actually, uh, tell me why it won't work. Because Yeah, don't just say it won't work. Give real thought. Yeah, exactly. And then if if my hope is that all these, it's not going to work because of X... Actually, we solve all of X problems, and then the only thing left is that it's going to work. Right. So having that negative, that negative thinking is actually really good for Dave. I like negative thinking. He loves it. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Clay. <laughs> so that's it. You've listened to a bunch of fish nerds when you should have been fishing. Big thanks to our families for supporting us while we podcast. Go on Fishing Quest and doing all the things that nerds do. Big fat thanks to Dave Kellum from SpotOtter.com for being part of the show and having helped to get it going to begin with. Uh, and until next time, follow the code of the fish nerds, spawn early and often, avoid free lunches with strings attached, and swim against the current every chance you get. See you next week.